In my devlog series, I implemented cloth, and I figured I'd make a video dedicated on showing how that works exactly. So I figured the best way to show this was to start by oops, uh, showing you, that's uh, tangled, showing you what it looks like, and then I'll show you what the data that makes this thing looks like, and then I'll show you how it's processed. So this is the thing in itself. Uh, you can see it's essentially a ragdoll, but if I do this, it kind of looks like cloth. This um, is the model, if you want to call that, it that, that I use in my devlog project for vines. As you can see, there's a bunch of lines that make up the structure here, and the connections between those lines are points. Essentially, these lines act as the spacing between the points, like there's an intended spacing between each point, and then the points move to try to get that intended spacing. There's a lot going on here, which I'll get into a bit, but that's the general idea, is that there's restrictions that move the points to get the intended spacing. All right, so let's take a look at the data that makes this up. Just a uh, quick reminder, uh, this is part of my visual effects series, which means that I'm not going to be writing the code for the whole thing in this video. And actually for this one, I'm not even gonna be able to go over all of the code even used to render this because there's a lot that goes into this in terms of explanations. I'm mostly gonna go over the idea behind it so that you can make it yourself if you want. Also, the implementation of rendering I'm using for this does require Pygame 2, so keep that in mind if you want to use my code in the description. It's just for the way I render the polygon based on the points. It's a quick way to generate an outline to render it. Anyways, so here's the data for the cloth or the ragdoll or whatever. It's just some JSON with... I, I gave it a .rag extension, but that doesn't really matter. It's really just JSON. It's a dictionary with a different, with a few different categories. First of all, it's the points category. These are the points that make up the ragdoll or cloth. It's just kind of X and Y values. And then if I go over this way, you can see that there's a connections section. These are just the indexes of the points. So this is saying that there's a connection between point zero and point one. And then the intended size of the connection is assumed to be the default spacing of it in this. So essentially, this representation is of the object at rest. So it's points, and then the connections between the points based on the index of the points. And these connections are what are used to restrict the movement of the points and move them towards each other or away from each other to fit the intended spacing. The scale thing right here is just used to convert these units, which are just an unspecified unit really, into pixels. So I multiply these positions by the scale to get the pixel location. Keep in mind all of these points are going to be modified during the simulation. And then finally there's the color, but I'm not using that right now. That's just an extra value that I use in my dev log. This uh, script right here doesn't even use it. So here's the main script for doing all of the cloth stuff or ragdoll stuff, whatever you want to call it. So I've got some quick stuff to load the files. Like I said, it's JSON, and it just loads them in, and it can give me all of the uh, ragdoll or cloth data. And uh, the data that's loaded in is what I pass to my cloth object in order to um, create a new object. This is the only argument it takes, is the rag itself. Uh, I'm just going to go over the functions really quick. This is the initialization. It needs to create the points. So right off the bat, there's something different in the way I calculate positions using this. I'm using something called Verlet integration, where each point is actually two points, and uh, I calculate the velocity of the points because it's an object that kind of moves around, so there's velocity associated with the points. I calculate the velocity of the points based on the point's current position and the point's last position. Uh, I actually went over this in my devlog, but the effect this has is that if I move the current position, it changes the angle and distance relative to the previous position, which effectively changes the velocity since the velocity is calculated from the current position and the previous position. So when I move the points to fit in with the restrictions of the connections between the points, that makes it so that the points will have 
updated velocity. So like if it's going one way and it hits the restriction of a point and that restriction pulls it in the other direction, then it'll actually bounce in the other direction. That gives it the uh, bouncy feel. So the points are just the points themselves. The sticks, that's just the connections between them. Um, I have this code here that spawns the sticks. It's just the two points and then the distance between the points. So it knows how long the stick needs to be or essentially how long the connection is supposed to be so that it can move the points towards each other. So down here, I've actually got the rendering functions. This is the stuff that I'm not going to go over in here because it'll take too long. Just know that it renders stuff based on the points and then I can apply an offset if I want. So the main stuff here is update and then update sticks. Add sticks is just called when it's initialized to create the connections. So update moves the points based on their previous positions and also updates the previous positions. So it goes through all the points and then it skips the ones that are listed as grounded. The grounded points are the points that I don't want to move because in um, my devlog series, you can see I use this for vines and whatnot. And if you've got a vine, it's like attached to something and you don't want the part where the vine is attached to something to be moving around. You want that to be in a static position. So I call those grounded points. It's stuff that can't be moved. Everything else can move, and typically as a result of those ones not moving, the other parts uh, move relative to it. So the first thing I do for each point is calculate the distance between the current points and the previous points. That's essentially the velocity. Then I update the previous points to be the current points, and then I update the uh, current points with the velocity that was just calculated. So that applies the velocity and updates the points so that it can be applied next time. I also do a slight modification to the uh, Y point, the present Y point, and move it down by 0.05. That essentially just adds velocity. That's adding 0.05 pixels of velocity, um, or it's an accelerating in 0.05 pixels down per frame. So this one right here is what makes up the gravity that makes things more normal looking because if I swing it up a little bit you can see it falls back down. That's what that one line does. So if I take this out you can actually see that it behaves differently. It floats around. Anyways, you gotta update the points themselves every frame and then after that you have to apply the rules of the connections. So that's what the update sticks function is for. It updates all of the sticks to move the points based on their spacing. So the first thing you do is get the distance between the points. Well, technically the first thing you do is go between all of the uh, sticks and then you process each connection individually. So you get the distance between the points involved in that connection. And then the distance difference right here, it's not super clear, but this is the difference between the distance between the points and the uh, intended distance between the points because if you remember the connections are supposed to have a specific length so so this calculates how far the points are from their intended length and then the mv ratio is the movement ratio it's just essentially percentage of the distance that the points need to be moved each since we've got two points in a connection the uh, m movement ratio has to be divided by two in the end so this section just gets the percentage that the difference is from the full distance. The distance difference is the amount you would adjust the distance to make it the exact right distance that the points are supposed to be apart. So you get that percentage and then you can move based on that percentage to adjust things. And then since you've got two points and you're processing them separately, you gotta divide by two because when you have a specific amount of distance to make up to get the points aligned, you can't make them both move that distance or you're moving them too much. So yeah, you divide it by two since they're both moving separately. Next you calculate the uh, X and Y difference, and then you do, you do the movement for each point. You gotta check if it's not grounded though, because if it is grounded, then you don't move it. So if the point is not grounded, then you can modify the X and Y positions by their distance between each other by the movement ratio, which I just went over. And then this number right here is essentially some elasticity because if you do just one, it'll move it to be exactly where it's supposed to be. If you do 0 0.85, then it'll move it close to where it's supposed to be. 
since this is an iterative process, it means it takes more iterations for things to get in the correct position if you use something like this. One other thing important to mention is that even if you do use one, things won't exactly come to the right shape immediately, since the sticks all are connected and sometimes the points have multiple connections. One connection will move a point and then its other connection will move it in another direction. So it takes a little bit of time for those positions to settle and for the shape to become static. So that's pretty much it for the concept. I also have this function right here, which is for moving the grounded points. This is just useful for moving the object around in a way that's uh, physically active. Because if you just offset the rendering, it's not going to modify the physical behavior. Because if I move my mouse to the right, you can see uh, that it reacts to that. The only way to get that is by moving the object by moving the grounded points instead of um, just moving the render. Anyway, so I'm going to quickly go, go over the uh, main code for this, and then that'll be it. So I I just load the rags, which I I gave it the directory that I got the rag doll in, and then I give it the string vine so it knows to use this one. So I'm just telling it to create a cloth object with the vine ragdoll. And then all I gotta do is, well, I move it based on my mouth, mouse position. And then I update the posi point positions based on the whole velocity calculations based on the previous points. Then I update the, the connections so the points will move towards each other or away from each other just to align things. And then I'll render. So I've actually got two render modes here. So the first one is this wireframe one, and the second one, this is the one you need Pygame 2 for, is the outline mode. And I just got the keyboard inputs to switch that. Anyways, I'll be leaving this code in the description, so you don't have to go through the trouble of making this yourself. It shouldn't be too hard to make modifications. This one section is probably the hardest part for people to write usually. So um, if you've got this code, you can attach whatever you well want onto it. I'll probably make it a zip file or something so I can include this ragdoll and this as well. But this is the main script here. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you've got any questions, you can head over to my Discord server. I've got a channel dedicated to questions, and there's a bunch of people willing to answer questions there. And then if you're interested in my projects, you can follow me on Twitter or check out the devlog series on this channel. So I'll see you guys in the next video.